Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. This is the True Friday Nero Custom, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This received, well, it's a tie for right now. Um, all the votes between this week, next week, and several weeks to come, unless uh, somebody goes and spams some things in the link in the description down below. Uh, but both vehicles today have eight votes. And the vehicles next week will have eight votes, and the week after that will have eight votes, and I think even the week after that may have eight votes. Anyways, the True Friday Nero Custom Supercar, which I know a lot of people are like, eh, supercars always make it to the top of the mountain. Yes, but how well do they do? That is always the question. And we're about to see some pretty good stuff. The Nero is a great all-around car. Yeah, it's not the fastest in top speed. It's not the fastest around the lap. Um, it's not the fastest in stunt races, though it does really well in stunt races. But it is a good overall car. It just has that nice balance where no matter what application you find it being needed for, it does well. You know, it's a solid performer and can kind of hang with the top cars uh, without much effort. And that's what we're seeing here. Of course, it is all-wheel drive, uh, so that does help a lot in off-roading. And it is just flying up Mount Chiliad. I mean, we're there right now in a minute, and we're already making really good progress here. We've started actually climbing the mountain itself or off the smaller hiking trails, and we are pushing forward, and the thing's just flying couple of mistakes here and there just a little too much speed uh, yeah it's been a few weeks of slower vehicles uh to take up the mountain so to finally be back behind the wheel of a proper supercar uh that isn't electric or you know weird things like that it's been a while so you know things are bound to happen by the way one of the things that we've always struggled with in the in the willet off-road series has been youtube compression so if you're watching on a computer down in the bottom right hand corner, uh, you may notice that there's an extra option on the little HD gear selection. This video was recorded, rendered out and uploaded in 4K. I'm not going to be one of those YouTube channels that throws that in the title, uh, but it is in 4K. Uh, if you switch to 4K, even if you're on a lower resolution device, um, first of all, it's going to look much better. The compression of 4K videos is nowhere near as bad as it is even 1080p. Um, second of all, don't do it if you're on any type of data cap because the 4K streaming 4K video uh, does consume a lot of data. Um, so if you're on slow Wi-Fi or if you have a data cap, you may just want to leave it in whatever your particular mobile device selected. But look at this. Look at this time that we are getting from the Nero. We are up. In two minutes, 36 seconds. Will it off-road? Yeah, making it the new first place supercar and third overall. We don't count the buzzard being in first place. Um, so yeah, this thing just absolutely flew. Uh, the only things that it was slower than coming up the mountain was the desert raid and the trophy truck. And the trophy truck is down at two minutes, 31 seconds. It's gonna be a long time before we see anything that can beat that trophy truck time. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know that it can be done. I, I really don't. Uh, obviously, a helicopter beat it, but like I said, we don't really count the helicopter, even though it's in the list, that was more for the walls. Um, the controlled descent isn't really that eventful, though. There, as I was about to say, because it is lightweight car, it does want to bounce around a little bit, and it, it illustrated that point for me perfectly just as I was about to talk about it um you may have noticed that at the start even at the bottom of the mountain the car was already a little muddy that's because I had a, a failed attempt uh to run up the mountain that ended very quickly and almost as soon as it began again kind of forgetting the, the power I was dealing with here but I really like the Nero Custom it's like my go-to car for stunt races uh just because it's really predictable it's really stable uh, like I said it does bounce around a little bit uh, we'll see here on a jump it lands nicely though so while the uneven stuff in the terrain up here in the mountain does unsettle it quite a bit when it does go over a jump it will usually that one wasn't a very good example but i was going kind of sideways it will usually land uh just fine so it's a good car i i really like the new custom and i like the way i have mine designed i think i got a really good design on it um, I've seen a lot of Nero's and a lot of Nero customs, and I've 
Never seen one I liked more than mine, but I'm kind of prejudiced like that, I guess. But uh, anyway, I will readily admit when somebody has a better designed car than me, but I've never seen a Nero Custom that looks better than mine. I was really proud of it when I came up with this one. But um, so we're moving on down to the final bit of dirt here. Again, beautiful times because this car is just a good all around vehicle. Doesn't really mind that it's up and down a mountain, though ooh, it did tag the tree of many crashes just a little bit. The best the back end got a little wide, and that's something I've been fighting with. You can see several times as I get on the gas, it's a little too hard as I'm turning. The back end does come on around, even though it is an all wheel drive vehicle. I think it does have rear bias. I don't know, I didn't look up the actual percentage split, but a good car, really nice to drive. Um, and actually one that has quite a bit of attention to detail, which we're going to see here in a minute. We're down to 2 minutes, 33 seconds. We're going to go back to the top of Mount Chiliad now and fling it off of the ramp to see what's what. And if you are watching in 4K, wow, what a beautiful scene that is right there. Um, this car, despite being one of the newer cars to the game, uh, and by newer, I mean in the past year or two, um, it does have a very small amount of crumple zones in the car. Not as much as, ooh, there goes the door. Not as much as some of the vehicles uh, that came with the game where they can become so deformed that you can't even really recognize them anymore. Um, but as we'll see, once this thing does gets all the way to the bottom, uh, there is some slight uh, deformations uh, up by the headlights and even in the back of the car. So it does sustain slight body damage, unlike some of the latest cars that have been out of the GTA that damage is literally just scratches in the paint and maybe you lose a door and a window, but even then sometimes not so much. So yeah, I'm at least pleased to see that there's some damage possible. I mean, you are falling down a mountain after all. I mean, if you've watched Bruffy's uh, g friend videos and you've seen how some of those cars, after they get beat up, the ones that you can just steal. And of course, there's not a single DLC car in any of those. So, you know, I'd like to... Hopefully, when GTA 6 becomes a thing and we're playing whatever the next GTA Online is, we'll have better damage models. I have that hope because I know Red Dead Online looks absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Like, I haven't seen any compromises made between story mode and online so far so we'll see anyways true fighting hero coming up around the log pile managed to tag the log pile and even into the second one there and those claps but we are finally down one minute 49 seconds we'll take a look at the damage here most of the lights are gone we have a window missing we have an entire door missing the right door won't close there is that minor body damage you'll see it most of the headlights up front and slightly bent wheels but that is going to bring us to our next vehicle, the Declassy Sabre Turbo. One that I am finally glad to get to test. We've done the Sabre Turbo custom in the snow. And if I remember right, it did not finish. It's too much torque uh, in the snow. It just couldn't get the, the power down to move it forward. But one, I love the Sabre Turbo. It's just a beautiful car. Um, I own several. I have this one that I painted as kind of a tribute to the Hearst Olds 442. Uh, four, four, uh, yeah, I think that's right. Ooh, hiker down. I hit a lot of hikers with this car, by the way. Um, I had one levels constantly. Parts of it didn't get recorded. It's just when I was traveling around, but we hit a lot of hikers. Anyways, this is my tribute card to like the Hearst 442. Uh, that was a pace car um, back in its day. And then also here on my second character, I have one of the red uh, rare NPC modified uh, Saber Turbos that you just spawn in the game that you can steal, store, sell, whatever. You can sell for like 17 grand. I could be wrong with that. Maybe only 15. And then on my main character, I have a Saber Turbo Custom that started out live as one of those red uh, rare Saber Turbos, but uh, it's since been so modified you wouldn't recognize it. Uh, of course, the upgrade loses that great two-tone paint job that's on this car. I absolutely love the way the paint is on by default on the Saber Turbo. It just makes for a beautiful car. Of course, uh, if you happen to be, I don't know, maybe an English lad who shares my same first name, you might have garages full of Saber Turbos and Saber Turbo Customs. Maybe. 
But uh, I've yet to see them all, I think. But he's crazy, man. I think they're all on Xbox anyway, so we'll have to I'll we'll have to get in there on Xbox one day and see them all. But we're making a good climb in the Saber Turbo. Uh, I sent out a tweet about this car yesterday, um, and it was inaccurate uh, in the position. I, I said in my tweet that uh, one car got first in its class, one car came in third. This car does not come in third. We'll get all the way to the top of the mountain to see exactly what place it takes. But it's doing great. I mean it. You got some muscle cars, so I gotta be careful when I come around corners and, you know, even in the straights, you don't want to put too much power down, just the back end will start slipping and sliding around, but Saber Turbo is a, a pretty good car overall. I mean, it looks great, it sounds great, it's easy to drive. It's a great car to just steal, by the way. You notice I turned off the ringer on my phone because I'm just tired of hearing it non-stop. I don't know what they're gonna do and read that online. What are they going to do, send carrier pigeons? We constantly have a pigeon incoming when uh, <laughs> the game needs to send us a message to remind us to go buy the newest horse camp or saloon so we can have ourselves a business run of the saloon. Blackwater. I don't know. That's my best uh, yokel cowboy voice. I don't know. Best I've got. Sorry. But Saber Turbo is making a good run. Uh, the only area it really struggled was right here. Um... Just didn't want to seem to get the grip, I, and I did modulate the throttle. I know it was a really quick attempt, but trust me, it, there was no hope in it. But I don't have to go as far back as most cars. Just needed to get a little speed so it would have momentum to then carry on up the top of Mount Chiliad. And we are up three minutes, eight seconds, almost fell off the edge. Will it off-road? Yeah, Saber Turbo did. Fantastic, as I lose a wanted level. But that means we're now going to take it back down Mount Chiliad. By the way, it did come in second in muscle class. 57th overall, tying with the car that we mentioned last week, the Fister Comet. That's right. Last week we mentioned the Fister Comet, a car that beat it by just a little bit. Yeah. Well, this week we have a car in muscles that tied. Bit of an issue getting back down the mountain here, but we quickly get this sorted out. There we go, we're now on our way. Sorry that you hear the lid of my uh, clean canteen. Making all kinds of noises. It was very close to the microphone when that happened. I'll try to edit it out, hopefully. You'll be like, what noise are you talking about, Brian? And I heard nothing, which means I did my editing job correctly. Most likely it'll still be in there somewhat. Um, I always need water in the middle of these. Talking for 15 minutes straight about cars. I don't know, it makes me look thirsty. Not that kind of thirsty, like, actually. Anyways, so. Back downhill, uh, not really any major issues from the Saber Turbo. Um, again, it's just a good car. Well, except I just drove it over the side of a ledge and swept it over, but that's my fault, not the car's fault. Uh, but it's a very balanced car, very easy to drive, uh, even in the dirt, um, which is, makes it a reliable car to steal when you see it in the lobby, and which is why so many people do run to a Saber Turbo when they see them is because they're just so easy to drive. I mean, yeah, they're muscle car, they got a great sound, they've got good power, but they're not so poorly engineered that you can't do anything with that power. You can actually turn it into speed instead of just tire smoke and, um, you know, broing out into a crowd of people. Um, and how does it do over these jumps? Well, that one's not so pretty, but I also went off it. Uh, kind of crooked, two cars in a row today, hmm, man. Uh, so we'll come up the next jump, see how we do. Hopefully I've learned my lesson and we'll go over this one a little more straight. Yep. Yeah, look at that. That is how you want to land. When you're going to go in there, some cars bounce and bump all around. Not Saber Turbo. It just makes a nice drama-free landing. Uh, that I went over a little crooked, but even then the landing was beautiful. The car just, all four wheels on the ground, did not bounce around. Did not try to kick the back end out, except right there it did. But on that lane, it was beautiful. So, down to this last little bit before we climb just a little bit back uphill to begin the last final descent in our muddy trail here. It always looks muddy, but I don't think it actually is muddy. I think it's just, I don't know, pine tree, pine, pine, pine needle covered. Maybe that's it. There we go. Another hiker down. Another hiker down. <laughs> Told you we got a lot of hikers with this car, and I got a lot more on the uh, the way back up. 
Uh, not sure you add for the damage to sin as well. Like, you're just hikers non stop. It's really hazy out right now. We are down two minutes, 55 seconds. It's not a bad downhill run for the control descent. Very easy car to control, but that means in a beautiful sunset, sunset shot, if I can talk. Again, that's 4K worthy right there. If you didn't switch, maybe just watch that little scene in 4K. Beautiful sitting there waiting to launch off, but one of the cars that is original in the game, so we should have things fall off and get dented and all that, but because this car is so easy to control in the air, that was its first major collision. I was able to keep flipping it over and getting it to go to a direction where it always landed on its wheels. Um, bumper's hanging off a little bit. Looks like we've got a couple windows out, a few smash lights. Oh, stuck a little bit there for a second. Kind of a weird approach for that area, but right into a rock took a little bit of the health from my character. Again, just some weird stuff happening here, but we eventually get it sorted out and actually make progress. Looks like we've already got a bent wheel, but no engine damage to speak of. Uh, there was going to be a different car tested instead of the Nero, by the way. I was going to do the Karen Astarope, but I discovered my particular Karen Astarope that I have in my garage. I don't think I've even put insurance on it. Like, I've done nothing to it. I stole it and parked it in my garage. Never upgraded, and I just don't know that I feel like I don't know, spending a few hundred thousand dollars on a car that, if I needed garage space, would be one of the first things to get sold. It literally sits in a garage full of a bunch of just random cars I stole off the street just to say, oh, hey, I have every car by Karen now, you know. L literally, that's the reason I have it. Oh my gosh, I cannot get through this section. There we go. Let's go down to the bumpy money bit with the Saber Turbo. Yeah, that's why we don't have the Astro Open this weekend. We may not even do it, because well, it's not upgraded, so it's not fair to compare it to upgraded cars. Oh, nice roll as we attempt to climb the embankment by the wood pile. It's one way to get up there, to roll up the hill, but we are down two minutes, two seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the Saber Turbo. Of course, all the lights are gone. Most of the windows are gone. The trunk will not close. The rear bumper is damaged. There's pretty significant body damage, and there is bent wheels. Hey guys, don't forget to get subscribed so you can see all the Wheel It Off-Road videos, and go vote for the videos, or videos, go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in future Wheel It Off-Roads by clicking on the link in the description down below. Until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.